Trauma is a Greek word that means wound. And at some point in our lives, that wound will require treatment. So if you feel that you've been traumatised by something, it could be decades ago, don't ignore it, don't bury it, don't think that life will just make it go away, because it won't. It'll come back and it'll surface at some point. So explore it, find someone to talk to, it doesn't have to be a doctor, it could be a stranger, it could be a best friend, it could be your wife. Whoever it is, talk about it and drag it out into the light. It's absolutely crucial. That got me to thinking about depression. What does depression mean? It's depressing. What are we actually holding down? What are we putting under so much pressure? Is it guilt, fear, love, hate? So many human emotions that often lead back to a previous trauma. There's often a connection there. So just explore it. Explore it. And you'll need help to do it, possibly. But the crucial thing to do is do not bury it and ignore it. So I touched earlier on the power of being outside. Immersed in nature should not be underestimated. It's magical. You hear things you didn't hear before, you see things you didn't see before, you smell things. It allows you to think. Uh, and I would advise anybody, even if it's just for a small walk, uh, to do it. It definitely cancels out the unwanted noise in your head. And it does allow you to think and it allows you to reflect. As I say, it's took me all, nearly half a century to understand that reflection is really important. Uh, this word is absolutely crucial. I lost perspective. The ability to say, well, what's the worst that can happen here? You know, I lost that. Gone. And I suffered a mental breakdown. And I was absolutely convinced that my loved ones would be so much better off without me. That's something else that's saying out loud is bizarre. Um, but I didn't try and commit suicide, but in here, that's where I was. If I'm a burden now, what am I going to be in five, ten years' time if I get that far? My boys that all look up to me, how are they looking at me now? How should they cope with what's coming? So I was taken into psychiatric hospital where I remained for 10 weeks and I spent time in Shrewsbury and Tamworth. Um, I had a period there where probably for the first couple of weeks I probably didn't actually know where I was. But when it started to dawn where I was, so many emotions came through. Uh, fear, anger, the need for confrontation. I went through all of it. Um, and it's a very difficult place. The people that work in there are again heaven sent. And eventually I was able to get that perspective back. When I was with my visitors, I was able to see them for who they are. And it wasn't about me anymore, and it was about them. Uh, and my perspective started to come back. But at that time, hospital became my safe place. That sounds odd, doesn't it? It was returning to everyday life, it terrified me. I'd have maybe an hour at home, then an afternoon, and then eventually I was allowed an overnight. And looking back, I just played the game. I saw anybody and everybody, and I spoke, and I did what I had to do within the confines of the home. But I knew I was going back, and it felt safe. I had no responsibility, and the anxiety and the worries and, and the, the, the racing mind stopped, not at home, but when I went back. Um, I used to say to the lady when she was at the door and I was waiting to go to the car to go for my home leave, I'd say, we're friends, aren't we now? You're keeping that room for me, aren't you? Nobody's coming in there. And we'd laugh and joke because I, I had to know that it was there for me. Um, now, she couldn't guarantee that because it's a busy place. I mean, it's a, it's a terrible reflection on society that these hospitals are so busy. They're so, so busy. But that's how...